Good afternoon, class. The title of this lecture is The Leadership of John B. Gordon at Bloody Lane. It is a lecture for a graduate level class titled Alabama and the American Civil War. It is especially suitable for the module of instructions on fighting Alabamians. I am here in the Huntsville area. Huntsville, Alabama is a good place to discuss John B. Gordon, commander of the 6th Alabama, because it was here in Huntsville where he delivered one of his great pre-war speeches. John B. Gordon was a lawyer, businessman, devoted Christian, slave owner, and strong voice for the expansion of slavery who embraced the military life for the first time in 1861. Although he had no military experience, Gordon advanced quickly through the ranks from company to corps level and participated in numerous military battles. He is a hero in Confederate history. One of his most notable engagements was at Bloody Lane during the Battle of Antietam, or also known as Battle of Sharpsburg. At Bloody Lane, Gordon displayed perseverance, gallantry, command presence, and unswerving dedication that contributed greatly to the strong stand of the 6th Alabama at Bloody Lane. The engagement at Bloody Lane took place at the center of the Confederate line. It commenced at 9.30 a.m. on September 17, 1862, and lasted into early afternoon. It was during the engagement at Bloody Lane that the perseverance of Gordon prevailed. Prior to the Union attack at Bloody Lane, Gordon voiced his perseverance to Robert E. Lee. Lee and General D.H. Hill were riding along the center of the formation, and Lee, convinced that McClellan would attack at the center, admonished Gordon to maintain the line at any cost. Despite Gordon's overwhelming exhaustion and the suffering he experienced from his previous battles, Gordon expressed an unmatched determination to keep on fighting. According to Gordon, I quote, to comfort General Lee and General Hill, and especially to make, if possible, my men still more resolute of purpose, I count, called aloud to those officers as they rode away, these men are going to stay here, General, till the sun goes down or victory is won. Only minutes after Gordon's words to Lee, the Federals began their attack at Lee's forces. Advancing in great numbers on the Confederate center line, Union troops withheld their fire and charged with bayonets. After numerous charges with bayonets and an attempt to break through the Confederate line, the Union commander realized his soldiers would need more than bayonets to overtake the Confederates. The Union commander ordered his soldiers to load their rifles and fire into the enemy. At close range, both sides exchanged volleys. It was in this bombardment of bullets from the Union troops that Gordon put the perseverance he voiced to Lee into action. As Gordon was talking with Colonel Charles C. Two from the 2nd North Carolina Regiment, a Union bullet hit Gordon in the left calf. Gordon continued his fight against the Union. As Gordon's soldiers fell all around him, the Union fired another shot into Gordon's right leg. Gordon was determined and did not give up. He remained in the battle and motivated 6th Alabama riflemen in their defense against the Federals as the fight raged on throughout the morning. As Gordon continued to command his troops, his enemy discharged another bullet into his left arm. At this point in the fight, the impact Gordon had on the strong stand of the 6th Alabama was evident. Gordon's soldiers saw the blood running down his arm and urged their leader to go receive medical attention in the rear. They promised to stand fast against the Federals, even if it met the, even if it met the death of every 6th Alabama soldier. Once again, Gordon refused to give up the fight, but he pressed on at Bloody Lane. Following the third wound came a fourth bullet, penetrating Gordon's shoulder. Even after the fourth hit, that resulted in significant loss of blood and strength, Gordon stood to his feet and was determined to repulse the Federals. He started to move through the line of fire to admonish his troops to not give up when a fifth and final bullet struck Gordon in the face. He fell to the ground and would have suffocated in his own blood if it was not for a bullet hole in his cap that allowed the blood to drain. 
Gordon displayed tremendous perseverance at Bloody Lane, especially in view of the challenges he faced leading up to the Battle of Antietam. Perseverance, however, was not his only leadership quality that contributed greatly to the strong stand of the 6th Alabama. Gordon also demonstrated gallantry. Gordon's gallantry is what stood out to his soldiers and leaders when they described his contributions at Bloody Lane. One soldier, writing in the Montgomery Advertiser, expressed how the bravery Gordon displayed was a common feature in his life. In discussing Gordon's leadership at Bloody Lane, he referred to Gordon as our gallant Colonel John B. Gordon. For the soldier, the fact that Gordon continued to admonish his men even after receiving multiple wounds was an act of heroism. Another soldier refer referred to Gordon as the unflinching Gordon. The soldier was so impressed with Gordon's gallantry at Bloody Lane that he was confident Gordon would make the next rank. According to the soldier, he would treasure the opportunity to continue to serve under Gordon's leadership. Gordon's heroism left a lasting imprint on him. In addition, Thomas S. Taylor wrote about the courage of Gordon at Bloody Lane in a September 20 letter to his father. In his letter, Taylor described how he witnessed brave soldiers from the 6th Alabama dropping all around him. Interestingly, the only brave, wounded, or killed individuals Taylor mentioned in his letter were Colonel Gordon and Lieutenant Perry. Those two officers exemplified the gallantry exhibited on September 17th by all 6th Alabama soldiers. If Gordon experienced fear, he hid it well from those around him and stood as an example to all who served under his care. In short, Gordon's bravery was instrumental in the strong stand of the 6th Alabama at Bloody Lane. Gordon's leadership also highlighted, leaders also highlighted his gallantry. D.H. Hill included him in a short list of individuals who distinguished themselves at Bloody Lane. Robert E. Rhodes wrote in his official report on Sharpsburg that Gordon was acting with his customary gallantry. In addition to perseverance and gallantry, Gordon consistently displayed command presence. Sixth Alabama soldiers they knew they were not alone on the battlefield, but that their commander was with them. They placed great trust in the abilities of Gordon and even saw him as indestructible. Those who served with him in previous battles were aware of how Gordon encountered many dangerous situations, yet came out of the battles unscathed by the enemy. They felt more secure and confident having Gordon in the lead and would do whatever their commander asked them to do. Gordon's command presence was evident in his visible presence. Gordon benefited from a tall and strong stature. Gordon's daughter, Frances Gordon Smith, referred to his height and strength and that he looked like a soldier. Gordon also indicated that he had a strong body when discussing his ability to, to keep on fighting despite his wounds. However, his command presence included much more than his stature. Sixth Alabama soldiers saw Gordon at the center of the fight, leading them into battle. Gordon remained with them until he could no longer stand. Gordon further displayed command presence in his vocal presence. Gordon was well known for his commanding voice. William Harrison Crow from the 12th Alabama witnessed the power of Gordon's voice during the Battle of Seven Pines. Crow said, I heard the clarion voice of Colonel Gordon calling to his men on our right above the roar of the battle. It was with this same powerful voice that Gordon commanded his troops at Sharpsburg. At the perfectly timed moment with all his strength, Gordon ordered his soldiers to unleash their rounds. Gordon then spoke words of encouragement to the riflemen and words of comfort to the dying. Gordon's command presence demonstrated more than anything his unswerving dedication. Gordon completely devoted himself to his soldiers. After his first wound, Gordon could have easily left his soldiers and went to the rear to receive treatment. This is especially true after his second, third, and fourth wounds. Gordon, however, would not leave. This is especially true in the midst of the fight. Gordon said he could not consent to leave them in such a crisis. The same unswerving dedication that Gordon displayed toward his soldiers was the same dedication Gordon displayed to the South. 
Before the war, Gordon was very vocal about his support to the cause of the South. Gordon, who was known for his natural oratory skills, gave rousing speeches on the rights to own slaves and to expand slavery. For Gordon, it was important for Southerners to protect their rights by seeking independence. As Gordon took command of the 6th Alabama at the beginning of the war, his commitment to the Southern cause remained the same. If required, he was ready to die for the principles he learned from his youth. Although Gordon did not discuss his dedication to the South in his account of the Battle of Antietam, there is no indication that he abandoned his beliefs and commitments. Some historians believe that even after the war, he remained true to the Southern cause and became a grand dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. Historian Robert Eckert, who wrote the most substantial work on Gordon, says this, I quote, unquestionably, Gordon occupied a prominent position with the Klan. Following the war, Gordon moved to Georgia and eventually served as both Senator and Governor of Georgia. Despite his possible ties to the Ku Klux Klan, many in the South respected Gordon. To this day, Georgia honors Gordon by displaying a statue of him at the Georgia State Capitol in Atlanta. In the end, despite having no military education and experience prior to the American Civil War, Gordon displayed perseverance, gallantry, command presence, and unswerving dedication that contributed greatly to the strong stand of the 6th Alabama at Bloody Lane. As the afternoon turned to evening, the blood of Union and Confederate soldiers drenched the fields surrounding Sharpsburg. Thousands of heroes from both sides sacrificed much for their causes, and the after effects lingered. Gordon stated, I quote, this battle left its lasting impress upon my body as well upon my memory. What exactly did Gordon remember? Perhaps more than anything, Gordon remembered the brave soldiers of the 6th Alabama who were willing to do anything for the commander they loved. With Gordon in the lead, they believed that anything was possible.